First, it started when there was a big conspiracy against Islam by the Persians, by the Jews, and by many enemies who were not really glad and happy to see Islam is spreading and the Islamic State started from Medina is beginning to flourish and spread without any pride we say uh, Brother Yusuf is he wrong? Okay. without any pride we say that Islam caused the destruction of the two empires the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire but people were not pleased with because of this so there was a great conspiracy it started when they made a lot of rumors against Uthman that Uthman was bringing closer his family to be the governors, which is false. That he was spreading the money here and there. Many lies. And that he was cursing Aisha. And they used something like his stamp. They made letters against Aisha. And they made letters by Aisha against Uthman. People were asking Aisha, did you write this? She said, well, lucky I didn't do it. Then after that, 25 extremists came from Egypt, surrounded the house of Uthman, and claimed that they want to practice against him what is called enjoying the good and forbidding the bad. And he is the bad person. They said, we want to judge you. If you do not repent, we are going to kill you now. Imagine, Uthman is being surrounded by 25 persons and he did not allow the whole army to stop them because he didn't want to cause fitna and to let any blood be shed by, because of him. While his army approached even China. Compared this president with the other presidents who do not care about the death of thousands and millions just to remain just for himself to remain alive <coughs> Ali he ordered his sons of Uthman to leave it no matter what happened but Uthman was keeping ordering them not to do anything against that it is better that the blood of Uthman be sh being shed. When he appeared to them by the window of his house, they started to throw the arrows to launch them against him. But they did not, they did not target him, they did not reach him. He said, why are you throwing me with your arrow, arrows? He said, we did not throw you while we threw you but it was Allah who did it they are quoting verse you did throw when you threw but it was Allah who did it he said you liars if Allah was reciting they entered the house and they killed him while he was reciting the moment he was reciting Quran him, and one of them the worst one among them he was stabbing him and he says, These are three stabbings for the sake of my sake. Stubborn people. The fight between Ali and Muawiyah started because Muawiyah said, We must get him punished. It's not good to do it now. Muawiyah got angry and said, We must do it now. So Ali said, I have to. I have to, and Ali was wrong. It doesn't mean that they were fighting for the sake of life, for the lively purposes, no. No. He was mushtahid. He was three times. Yes, it's written in Nahjul. The most reliable and the most important book that contains 
all the words of Ali with one another apparent that Baruch is one, our Prophet is one and there is nothing that we disagree except the matter of disagreement about the death of Uthman where is that? in Nahj al and concerning the matter of imamate leadership they say why they disallowed Ali from being the Khalifa after the Prophet and the Prophet recommended all the companions that you should let Ali be the Khalifa this is false there is no evidence about that but what we can use as an evidence against them is what we find in the book of Nahj al that he said إِنَّمَا الشُّورَ لِلْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Verily, the matter of selecting the president is a matter of consultation left in the hand of the muhajireen and al-ansar. He did not say that it is a matter of wasiyah that Allah ordered the prophet for me to be the leader. No. What we find in the book Najib al that he said, it's a matter of consultation. And this matter of consultation is left to the muhajir. If they selected one, then he is approved. He's the Who said it? Ali. Where is that? Najib al That refutes the whole idea of the Shia, that the matter of leadership is a matter of command left to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not true. Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Aisha that he said to her, bring me a pen and a paper to write something for the Muslims. Lest someone wishes, wishes it, that means the leadership. وَيَعْبَ اللَّهُ وَالْمُبِنُونَ إِلَّا أَبَلَكُمْ but Allah and the believers persist, insist that none deserves this leadership after me except Abu Bakr. And that is authentic and Sahih Muslim. He, we have to realize here that he did not say Abu Bakr must be the Khalifa after you. But he was giving some recommendations and that does not contradict with the matter of consultation. It does not contradict. This is very important. I don't know if you can turn this off, brother. The heating? Yeah. Yes, turn off the actual brother. Maybe the brother is not. Oh, maybe. Yes, sir. If you may please uh, turn this off. The heating is it off now, brother? Yeah? Just after that, yeah. And the Prophet when he when he got sick, he ordered Abu Bakr to be the, the, the one who stands for That is a sign. That is one of the signs. Now they have many things against Abu Bakr which I'm not going to involve myself. Such as, for example, they say, you know why Abu Bakr was called as siddiq Because, you know why? Because one day he said to the Prophet, now I extremely believe that you are a magician. That's why he was called a siddiq Because he extremely believed that the Prophet is a magician. And they said, you know why the Prophet took him with him when he immigrated to Medina? Because he wanted to deliver the Prophet to Quraysh. That's why the Prophet took him with him. So he won't be able to deliver him to the, to the pagan people of Quraysh. Wow. So what about when they reached to the cave, the small cave, when the Prophet ﷺ went in with Abu Bakr? Wasn't this a good opportunity for Abu Bakr to say to the people, catch him, he's here? Also they said, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, also they said that Allah quoted the Prophet as saying to Abu Bakr, لا تحزن, don't be grieved. Inna Allah ma'ana. Allah is with us. See? Mm, it seems Abu Bakr was chicken. He was afraid. Look, look, the Prophet is saying to him, 
لا تحزن Don't grieve. Don't be sad. Allah is with us. Why he said it? Because Abu Bakr was afraid for himself. What kind of childish kind of thinking? But Allah said, Tulut, La takhaf wa la tahzan. Don't be afraid and don't be grieved. Don't be sad. Don't be grieved. Or don't grieve. Hmm, it seems that Tulut also is chicken. What kind of mentality is this? And Jibreel called Maryam from beneath of the palm tree. He said, لا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحتك سرية Don't grieve. So is she was chicken. So what happened after that, brother? That there was a fight. Before that fight took place, Aisha was invited by many people to go to Ali and to be a barrier lest those two armies meet against one another, Ali and Muawiyah. They had a great zeal that since she is respected by the people, she is the wife of the Prophet. People said, you should go there. That Allah may reconcile between these two, these two opponents by your blessings. She, she was asked, O oh, mother of the believers, what brought you out of your house? She said, Wallahi, nothing but one verse. لا خير في كثير من نجواهم. There is nothing good in most of what they speak. إلا من أمر بصدقة except him who orders who encourages charity أو معروف or good deed أو إصلاح بين الناس or reconciliation between people that what brought me out to reconcile between the two groups that's all what did she say? no, she went out to fight Ali that's not true. Many people, even the Sunnah, unfortunately, they think that Aisha went out and she fought Ali. That's not true. Sure, sorry, is this? Um, can you give the source of this? What were you saying uh, with um, Aisha radiallahu anha? Yes, uh, it was narrated by Ibn Kathir in Al Bidayah and Nihayah and Al Tabari. But I'm not going to. If you ask me later, I will give you the numbers, inshallah. Sure. <coughs> and it was authentic. It is authentic narration. Many, Sheikh, not only one. Sheikh, also, um, should we make a note of these points where we want clarification or should we ask for them now? Because what I would ask is, why is it that the people of Sunnah, because I, I myself had the understanding, why is it the people of Sunnah have the understanding that Aisha and Adil had have fought with Muawiyah? Uh, historical things among the Sunnah who do not really differentiate between the authentic and the non-authentic. So it's not based on any narrations that they know of? Is it based on any, uh, any narrations or anything? There are some narrations which are false. I don't think. Uh, yeah, have you, sorry again to interrupt, uh, you are, any idea which books they, these people from Sahib or some of them? No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, oh, so I have access to the internet here? Yeah, sure, I have access. But I want to stop it. Okay. Um... Tabari is a very big book, Tariq al-Tabari. It's called Tariq al-Umam wal-Muluk, the history of nations and kings. In this book, he mentioned in the preface of this book that I have collected what I was able to collect in this book. If somebody may criticize some of what we have among the narrations, these narrations did not come by us but it occurred, those false narrations, by those whom we have taken the narrations from. So he was alerting the readers not to believe in anything he has unless they check the chain of narration that he gave. Now the book of At-Tabari contained many unauthentic narrations and the sources of this problem one of their worst people is Lut ibn Yahya, who's called Abu Mukhnif. 
he is one of the most narrators of these kinds of narrations and he is Shia and he's got that and At-Tabari brought many and many narrations of this person a lot of those false narrations about what happened between Aisha and, uh, and uh, Ali they are false narrations and this person is behind a lot of those false narrations Lut ibn Yahya Abu Muhnib one other point, one other question I would like but to... I don't want to, to, because this is a story and I want to Shall analyze it. So we leave it for the, we yeah, leave the questions and answers. Yeah? Write it down. No it's, very, it's very important. Yeah. I don't want you to lose your ideas and your marks. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to lose the structure of the right because it's a story and <coughs> very important. And it's also very important to mention to you the truth about what happened between Aisha and Ali. Now, she went and she met with her army, with Ali and his army. They met and their meeting was the best. Nothing happened. Now, the killers of Uthman who are penetrated or the Ali army came. And I'm sure that Lawrence if they met together and they had a good structure or uh, relationship together, that would be on the account of our necks and our bloods. They had a conference. The Sabai people who follow two guy, Yemeni guy, Saba. They had a meeting with the killers of Uthman. They both met. Read. We are going to kill many among the soldiers of Aisha, many kill the army of Ali. So both. And we'll be shouting that the army of Aisha had... Uh, started attacking. Yeah. Attacking. And the other people also will be shouting that the army of Ali had attacked. That happened. And both in the army, they were ready to fight, and they started to fight thinking that the other part had attacked them. This is what happened. This is the fitna. Then we had a, a ma'raka, a battle called Al Jamal. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Why it's called Al Jamal? Can anyone tell us? The Sayyidina Aisha, she was. Uh, recommended to go out into the battle on lighting a camel. Mm -hmm. So the heat of the battle s was surrounding her camel with her army protecting her. Okay. And the uh, I heard that Sayyidina Ali ordered for her to be yani, gently brought down this camel because it's causing a fitna, her coming out into the battle, it's causing more killing. And then? So that's why it's called because Sayyidina Aisha. What did, what did Ali do? I heard that that he he was saying for her to stop this. You know, she he was trying to prevent her from riding her camel out because it was causing a. So fitness. what he did? What he did? Um, okay, it's okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. that he may be having. I'll tell you what happened exactly. Why it is called Al Jamal battle? He say that because she was riding a camel. It's not true. That's not the only. That's not the whole point. Those people, as Sabai people, who follow this Jewish person, and the killers of Uthman, wanted to launch, to attack, and to target the box of Aisha, which is over the camel. The camel is very high. Imagine it. The camel is very high. And the box is higher than the camel. So it's easy for them to launch and target Aisha. And you know that uh, creature that contains a lot of thorns? What do you call it? Porcupine. Huh? Porcupine. Porcupine? Yeah. Porcupine. Hedgehog. hedgehog. No, it's porcupine because there's no hedgehogs in the. Yeah, food? Huh? Kung Fu. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we call, it, we, we call it Kung Fu. Yeah, hedgehog. Hedgehog. Hedgehog, yeah. Hedge? Hedgehog. 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 Yeah. Okay. Her box became just like hedgehog. Because of the arrows. Now Ali wanted to stop that. 
and Aisha was saying, who are throwing the wife of the Prophet? May those hands be burned in hell. So Ali wanted to stop this because Ali loves Aisha. She's the wife of the Prophet. Then Ali had to cut the hands and the legs of the camel. He did it himself. So the camel will fall down. You may say, oh, that's hard for the camel. Well, should we compare the camel with Aisha? The camel is nothing. Ali had to kill him to, to injure the camel so the camel will fall down. And when the camel falls down, nobody can target Aisha anymore. How many people know this fact? They think that Ali was against Aisha. That's not true. And after what happened, Aisha is not expert with those kind of rude people. She went to reconcile, but she was involved in this. Ali ordered many women to be with Aisha. And he ordered for her a lot of companions to bring her back and to protect her until she get back home as she left. <coughs> Nothing happened between Aisha and Ali. No hatred. But after that, they have a lot of narrations. Subhanallah. And among those narrations, many, many. For example, that Aisha and Ali sometimes used to sleep under one sheet. The Prophet used to be between them. But at Fajr prayer, he used to leave them both together under one sheet and he goes to the mosque. <laughs> what kind of people are those? You may be asking me, where's the proof? It's in Bihar al-Anwar, volume 101. Can you imagine what book is that? Volume 101, page 49. And the book of Salim ibn Qais al-Amiri, which is the most ancient book and closer to the time of Abdullah bin Sabah. Page 813. <coughs> And the people considered this book of Qais bin Salim is authentic as Al-Majlisi considered in his first volume of Bihar al-Anwar, page 32. And Atusi in his book Al-Fahrast, page 111. Many attacks against Aisha. Why is this? They said she hates the family of the Prophet. How come she hates them? Don't you remember what we narrated about Fatima coming to Abu Bakr and asking him for her land, etc., etc.? And she went angry, she went back angry with Abu Bakr because Abu Bakr did not allow to give her the land. You remember that? Who narrated this? Al Bukhari. By who? By Aisha. That's not true. They claim that that Aisha used to be hating the family of the Prophet. It is not true. These are the Shia rumors. No, no, thank you. Oh, okay. So, this is the whole story about what happened between Aisha and Ali, which people always, always, always tackling. And okay, now we can give questions for ten minutes. Catch it. Um, I'm going to shift it up once. I have two questions, inshallah. Go ahead. Firstly, is there a difference of opinion about whether Aisha radiallahu anha fought against Ali among the scholars, among the scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah? No. So, so Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, no. Indian, no. No, none of them recognize this view no. at all? No. Alhamdulillah, that's one thing. The other question was the, um, the last point that you raised. Oh, no, 
see, I should have, I didn't write this one down, I wrote that one down, I didn't write this. If the brother asks his question, then I'll come back, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, do you want to ask yours, then I'll come inshallah. back. Um, <clears throat> firstly, um, the, the, I mean, there's, I mean, mashallah, lots of these books that have been quoted, Bihar Anwar and so on and so forth. Um, just, just out of interest, inshallah, because I also have this occasionally because, you know, for example, I, I have a few notes on Shia and, and some cross of page reference and number and all the rest of it. And sometimes when I talk with a Shia, I quote from these, they say, have you seen it yourself? I say, no, I haven't seen it myself. They're from secondary sources and mostly internet sources. Um, I just want to ask you, inshallah ta'ala, I mean, like, ha have you seen Bihala Anwar? I mean, is it something that was available? Have you seen it yourself? Sure. These books that you sure. have seen, that you've opened them up and you've had, had a look at them? And, sure. Um, yeah. I did. I have all, all the Shia resources, uh, sources, all of them on two CDs, which the Shia themselves made. Ah. I have them here with me. Uh, beside the books that I have in my library, but I have all of their books, all of them, not some of them, on two CDs. This is the bogus of... Go on, bro, finish that. Um, and uh, secondly, there's something which um, Shiites they have a tactic of uh, using narrations from Bukhari and Muslim and twisting, twist, twi twisting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm pretty much okay with most of them, but there's one which, when they say to me, I haven't yet really found. Go ahead, go ahead, yes, please. This when Aisha radiallahu anha she got naked to teach someone to make. Yes, in, in Bukhari, she, mm, she was, yes. when she was in old age and she became, you know what I'm talking no, about? No, she's not in old age, no? no I'm not old age. But I know, you know, no Aisha died while well, she was also young. Can you don't, forget that the, don't forget that the Prophet married her while she was nine years. And the Christians always use this. She, he married her while she was nine years. Mashallah, you have a very open eye. What is your open eye when you read that David committed adultery with his neighbor's wife. What happened to this open eye? It became closed. Used against those people something we call I don't know how to call it other. Huh? I'll give you details how, about how it is. And you can the, uh, the word. For those who criticize this, isn't, isn't this worse than that? You criticize something which is not worse than if it is worse than that. Use this always. Is it counter criticism? Is it? It's, it's, it's basically it's <coughs> yeah. It's like for instance when the Christians when I when I've had discussions with Christians they'll say for instance um, they'll they'll talk about the issue of women. So you come back to them and say, well, in the Bible, women are not allowed to divorce unless the husband commits adultery. So if he beats her, if he doesn't maintain her, yeah, if he beats her, doesn't maintain her, if he abuses the children. You're not allowed to divorce, according to the Christian law, only if you commit adultery. So you can do every other thing except commit adultery. This is a very good divorce. opportunity. So you just argue, you know, you just come back. You mentioned Aisha, and Adila, and her. I make some points is that, first and foremost, without getting away from the brother's point, inshallah, Aisha was on, was on her responsibility. Yeah, so the point sure. is that, so you can, you have many, many... The very if she famous, was from Scandinavia, yeah, yeah. we're going to say she will not be able to have the menses until she becomes 18, exactly. 18 years. She's not from Scandinavia, yeah. she's from the Peninsula. But I'm saying, what, what, the point is that we said, it's a very famous book that many children are taught in school. And I, would, I heard when I was, it was a child, it's called mm -hmm. The Prime of The Prime of Mystery. The story is, one of them through the years, one of the girls has her menses. She's young, she has her menses. And all of the girls are making a fuss, and she says to her, congratulations, today you have become a woman. And so mm -hmm. it's acknowledged, Bill, when a woman, when a woman becomes on her menses, that when a young girl becomes on her menses, she becomes a woman because she's then able to produce children. This is uh, something acknowledged by doctors and so on. Sure. So, and, and also you give facts about how kings are civilized and different ages, you know, different leaders and age, the concept of to understand that, you know, and you give them a time in English, kings and queens, it wasn't a jeep in those days. Sure. Now, there's another point, is that we view the prophet, uh, we do not say, we do not claim that the prophet married his age because he wanted to, he wanted to have Especially because he wants to have a sexual relationship with her. The Prophet ﷺ is training her and preparing her to be a conveyor in the female society. Now, we view him as a prophet. Because you do not view him as a prophet, 
Now investigate if he's a prophet or not. Um, Let's not uh, deal with the subject because it's going it's to take us away from yeah, yeah. Can we get back yeah, to the yeah, um, I'm, I'm originally from Iraq. My father's Iraqi. So okay. I, I, a lot of the time I, I have to deal yeah. with a lot of Shia. You know? okay. I, I really having a tough time you know, Fine, sometimes. Okay. Um, first of all, can we make the point where um, is, it's agreed completely that if anyone makes the or ask anyone other than Allah and kufr. Mm. So that would put a lot of these Shia in, in the kuffar. Yeah. This is, this is, this is not the only that the Shia are involved with. Number one, claiming that the Quran is changed is also kuffar. kuffar. Now add this kuffar to the to the kuffar of saying yes. Yeah, talk about these things, but now we have to finish the thing that we are talking about. It's very important. We are running out of time. The source, sorry, Shia. The source of the Battle of the Camel. Because you mentioned the source, what, what are the, uh, what's the uh, source uh, from and cutting down the legs of it? It's in the middle, we have a few legs of Okay, from the last, that's all I wanted to know. And can you, can you finish the brother's point here, inshallah? The brother's point. Okay, can you quote the hadith from Bukhari? The book contains all the doubts and all the refutations of those doubts. Special. book is specialized for all their doubts. But I have... Uh, Just while you're looking for the uh, source, yeah, can I mention yeah. to the brother that... When I discuss with the Shia, I never get onto these stages with them. Always, I try to, and always, I sit with the always sit with the Imams, always sit with this thing of, of, I never ever get onto Bukhari or this or that, because the one issue, as the brother mentioned is, me and brother, when he, they write the same, or Ya yeah, Ali, yeah, yeah. you know, Ya yeah, Ali. And uh, you know these, um, how they say, you know, um, the greeting of the Ismaili, yeah. this, have this have this saying, I can't remember, it's off my head now, like we say salam alaikum, they say something, oh, and then they say something else regarding like. So I always, whenever I discuss with them, I don't get onto, I don't let them get me onto other issues. I will say, look, this is number one. What's the number one issue? Number one issue is who do we worship? So until that has been resolved and until they acknowledge that, and the problem is when they acknowledge it, if they acknowledge it just for argument's sake, okay, yeah, you're right. So, okay, if, we, if you're wrong, how now about the other things? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But I always keep my discussions with Rafida on, Tawheed, on Tawheed. Always keep it on Tawheed because they want to get you onto Bukhari. And the problem for that is if you've got brothers around you listening, you got, you know, you're having your discussion and often someone will come along and stand up next to you and listen as well. And if that brother's maybe not grounded, inshallah, the way you perhaps are, what it can do is it can put seeds of doubt in their mind regarding, do you understand me? And that is what they want to do. You, as, just as you, when you give dawah, sometimes you're not giving dawah to the person you're talking to. Yeah, sometimes you're not giving doubt to the person you're talking to. You're, you're, yeah, you're not giving doubt to the person you're talking to. I'll take it. You're giving doubt to the people that are listening. I'm sure we've had these experiences ourselves. When we're giving doubt to somebody, the audience is maybe listening more than the individual we're talking to. And that's exactly the methodology of the Shia. They want to affect, they want to affect the people listening to the dawah. Same thing with them coming to your masjid. Why do Shiites want to go to your masjid? They want to either be allowed to pray with you. So they're going to take your reward away. Oh yeah, no, 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 I'm not, not even dealing with the reward aspect. They just want other ignorant Sunnis to see, look, we pray in their masjids. So someone who's a jahil sees a Shiite putting a piece of paper down and praying with you. We don't let them pray in our mosque at all. They come, we say, look, take your, take your paper on your way. We don't let them pray with us in our masjid at all. Or you do to them what you did to the guy there. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? The we don't hate them, do we? Huh? Not the one who you... Punch. No, no, but this is used for, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a list of them. Okay. Okay, inshallah. Uh, as an answer to your question, I have a narration here in Bukhari. Uh, it's not in Bukhari. It's narrated by a Nasa'i in his Sunnah. <coughs> uh, narrated by Salim Sablan that Aisha used to be amazed by the trustworthiness of this slave. So she showed him how the Prophet ﷺ used to take wudu, etc. You know, all the details. And then she showed him how the Prophet was doing this, etc. Then Salim said, the one who was her slave, he, he was her slave. Then he came to her and told her, I am becoming a mukatib. Mukatib means when the slave is collecting money in order to free himself. And in Islam we have one of the excesses of 
zakah is to support the slave in collecting his money, giving him from the zakah to collect the money to become free. So she was speaking to him and he was telling her, O oh mother of the believers, make dua for me. She said, what? What is, what is it? He said, I have already collected enough money to become free. And I did. She said, you became free? He said, yes. Then she said, may Allah bless you. And then she put the hijab totally. That means now, at that moment, he is not allowed to see her anymore. But the narration doesn't say that she was getting naked. No. She was showing the hair to him. And that is something we, we don't deal with today. The mamluk, the slave, used to be allowed to see from his owner or her owner, his owner, to see the hair, the hands, part of the legs, down, just like what the brother can see from his sister or the son can see from his mother. But the moment he said to her, I'm becoming free, Khalas, she covered everything. Now the Shia themselves were asking this question. Is it allowed for the slave person to see the hair of his owner, the female owner, and her leg? They said it is authentic by Aban ibn Uthman that he asked Jafar al-Sadiq, is that allowed for him? He said, yes, it is allowed. This is narrated in the book Al-Hada'iq al-Nadira, volume 23, page 69, and Mustanad al-Shia for al-Naraqi, volume 16, page 53, and Al-Kafi for Al-Kulayni, volume 5, 31. You want? Wasail al-Shia, volume 20, page 223. Mustamsak al Awwal Wuthqa for Muhsin al Hakim, volume 14, page 43. Sure, just regarding this, this issue of books. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Excuse me. And also, Tusi narrated by Um Salama that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Um Salama, if you have anyone who is mukatab, that means he is on the process of freeing himself, collecting the money, and he had already what can enable him to free himself, then you have to cover yourself all against him. This is also narrated by Atusi in al mabsud volume number 6, page 72, and At-Tabrusi in Musaddaq al volume 16, page 26, and narrated by Ibn Abi Jamhur al-Ahsai in his book Awal al ali volume 3, page 435. This is the way, this is the way that I have this book, it's a great book, alhamdulillah. Do we have any English effort? Alhamdulillah, this book that I have, it refutes all the claims that the Shia, Shia and also hadith that the Shia use against us. This is a different, the uh, hadith I mentioned, was, this one was narrated in Bukhari, and she got into and got two boys, yes. but it's in Bukhari, um, and she was showing two young boys how to make a Is this the same hadith? No, 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 no. no. Have you ever sourced it yourself? Got, yeah? You've sourced it, you've seen your own eyes. No, no. The hadith, this is uh, the servant. And, and that person was a servant Aisha. And she did not show everything. She was behind. She was behind. She was behind. Is why you mean to say? Why is now? No, no, this is, this is in Nasai. And it was a group. And they saw the legs. Because it's very important that we have the basics. We have to pass through the basics. Not through the, those details. If you want that, take time with me. Well, I just wanted to add to what you as well. It's important to make sure. It's like dealing with Christians. You know, a Christian open up a. I remember someone saying, I thought you believe in one God. It says here we. When Allah is a term of majesty, we, we are not amused, but she meant herself. It's a sure. royal we. Yeah, it's a royal we. Oh, yeah. the queen so still says we. We, yeah. <laughs> but the point is, someone said, I thought you believe in one God, it says we here. Somebody dumb who didn't have a very command, good command of English. And it's important for them to say, when you're reading a hadith or a verse of Quran, have you sourced it, <coughs> firstly, according to the understanding of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaa? Because a Christian will open up and say, this verse says this. You say, did you go to the tafsir as we understand it? Or are you reading and understanding it your own way? Because Rafa, that's what they do. They don't respect, um, um, they don't respect the tafsir of Bukhari. And 
how we've interpreted the, the hadiths, they'll just open it, read it, and read into it what they want. So whenever they raise a hadith, I'll make, ask them, are you, is your understanding I sourced it to read quote hadith to me? And regarding this issue of, uh, have you seen the book? We'll have uh, um, historians of people, politicians, so on and so on. They have discussions, they'll quote books, and no one says, you know, bring a, 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 a volume. Just as we will quote their books to them, they'll quote them to us. So I, again, never get involved with this issue. You tell them, if you know it's from a trustworthy <coughs> scholar, because we know we're not allowed to lie, this is one of the principles of Dawah, that we can't, like Christians, make up false arguments against people simply to win an argument. We have to tell them the truth. So if it's from a trustworthy uh, uh, Sunni scholar, yes. You know, we don't, it, you have to prove it's bogus. We're not just making it up. We're not like you, you know? So I don't sort of deal with this, have you seen it with your own self? This is a stupid argument. Just, okay, actually, um, have you seen it? You know, and if, if you quote a book and I say, did you go and read that book? Did you read the body of yourself? This is a stupid argument. You should also consider the source. I mean, they, the principal main aim of theirs is to attack Alisana. So whatever they say, basically, just refuse to even know it. Let's the shift over there. Sure. No, sure. Fine. We did not begin with the yet. We can add extra time this evening as well, inshallah. If I'll be available. If you're available, inshallah. Thank you. Yesterday I had an access I had access to a very important document, but we can't show it today here because of the uh, projector. Someone sent to him a question about the narration which is considered to be authentic. And he already authenticated it. <coughs> Narrated by Jabir that Jibreel brought to Fatima a panel or what do you call it? A sheet, a big one, which is written thereby or therein that the Prophet recommended that she will be having 12 children from her. All of them will be Imam. Do you understand this? Now they say that we are the we belong to the twelve Imam. Let's count them. We know that her sons start from from Al Hassan, Hussein, Jafar, Musa, Jawad, Rida, etc., etc. To, to reach to Al-Mahdi, the, the twelfth. But we know that they begin with Ali, not with Al-Hasan. So how, much, how many they are now? Including Ali? Thirteen. Not twelve anymore. Unless they consider... That's another case. That is the son of Fatima. Because the narration which Assistani said, yes, is authentic. I have a document with me. <laughs> if you want, I can show it to you. Yeah, I can, look. I can show it to you. Like that. Enough. I'll read the narration to you. What about, what about the other, this you said yesterday? What about this Umar and Abu Bakr? No. Because those people, uh, they were not able to be the leaders. For many. One of them is many of them died in the battlefield with Al, with Al Hussein. And the Shia do not want to confess this. That Abu Bakr ibn Ali, Umar ibn Ali, they die in the battlefield with Al-Hussein. Yet, when the Shia cry for Al-Hussein, they do not cry for Ali, for Umar ibn Ali. Why they don't cry for him? Because they don't want the Shia to remember the, those names. If the Shia remember those names, they're going to ask questions. What about those? Why Ali called his sons Umar and Abu Bakr? Why? Okay. This is the document. It says, the name, they do not mention the name. The subject of the fatwa, of the question about the fatwa, the authenticity of the hadith. Assalamu alaikum. This is the question to assistant. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I say, wait, when you make a salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Zaid ibn Umar is the son of Umm Kulthum. You see, when they say in the internet, when I argue with them, 
They say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Then I say, Allahumma salli ala Zayd ibn Um Kulthum. Zayd belongs to the family of the Prophet. He is the son of Um Kulthum. Who is Um Kulthum? The wife of Umar. And she is the daughter of Fatima. And Fatima is the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Why don't you say, Allahumma salli ala Zayd? They don't speak. Come on, speak out. You see, you hate the family of the Prophet because Zayd, Zayd ibn Umar is a member of the family of the Prophet. They can't say anything. Anyway. أَرْجُوا مِنَ الْمَرْجِعَ السَّيِّدِ السِّيْسْتَانِي أَدَامَ اللَّهُ ظِلَّهُ May Allah keep his shade. And يُخْبِرَنَا that he tells us about the authenticity of this narration. الْكَافِي First volume. Bab, the title. مَا جَاءَ فِي الْإِثْنَيْ عَشَرْ وَالنَّصِّ عَلَيْهِمْ About the twelve and the text about them. Muhammad ibn Yahya, Muhammad ibn Hussain, and Ibn Mahmud, and Ibn Jarud, and Ibn Jafar, and Jabir ibn Abdullah, and Sari Qal. Dakhaltu ala Fatima. I entered. I went in to the house of Fatima. Oh, and between her hands, a, a big sheet that contained the names of Al Awsiya, the leaders, from her children. From her children. And I have counted. Twelve, the last of them is Al-Qa'im, the one in this small hole. Thalatha minhum, three among them, Muhammad, and three among them, they begin with the name of Ali. Assistani said, the text of this hadith is very clear, there is no doubt about it. And there are many other narrations. There are many other narrations that contain the same text. He said, it's very clear. There's no doubt about this hadith. That's it here. And at the end of it, the stamp, personal stamp of Assistani. Are you Assistani of Iraq? Yes. So how many they are? How many they are? Two of them, they were really, in fact, the leaders. Ali and Al-Hassan. And all the others, no. We have a problem now. They are, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned, planned against. I have, by the way, many lectures and debates in English, which I'm going to give to Umar today, inshallah. But I have no plain uh, CD. So I hope any, anyone who has... They can access it if you want. They can access information. I, can, I have very important picture in English. How Allah planned, planned against the Shia. And I have it. I'm going to give you a brief of that in English right now, inshallah. Anybody who wants access to it, they just need to see me, inshallah. Yeah? Okay. So they say that, let's say they say <coughs> that the Imams are 12. They say that they have... But as, as the others, nothing. And by the way, the Shia say that the words of the Imam is the word of Allah. When the Imam speaks, that means Allah is speaking. <laughs> Most of their fatwa, those Imams, on taqiyya. Does Allah speak with taqiyya? They were making different fatwas, and people asked them, why did you make different fatwas? They say, we have to do that. Because we are forced. But Allah, nobody can force him. Force Allah. How can he say that they were making taqiyya? And that is words of Allah. Did you understand me? And each one of those people, they say that this Imam, even if he's a child, he is knowledgeable. And Al Hassan used to speak 70 million languages. What? 70 million languages. That is narrated in Al Kafi book. And, and Al Majlisi said it's authentic. Maybe, maybe he was able to know the languages of the cockroaches, ants. Maybe. They say the words of the Imams are the words of Allah. Whenever they speak, this is the word of Allah. So what does it mean when the when they were child and saying wah wah? Allah was speaking. What are you talking about? So so let's say they were twelve. Okay, starting with that has Ali. Ali is not the son of Fatima, it's the husband of Fatima. Al Hassan and so on and so on. Allah planned against the Shia. Don't they say 12? But the, but the Imam number 11, is, his name is Al-Hassan Al-Askari. He was not able to give children. 
What do you say? Impotent? Impotent. It was impotent. Now, they have a big problem. How can they deal with it? They wanted to... They were talking about 12, 12, 12, but number 11 had no children. And it's written in the book of Al-Kafi that he had no access to have children. And when he died, they checked his concubines and wives that they may be having a baby. But they found all of them having no baby. None of them was pregnant. And he, had, he could not give children. That's in the book of Kafi. How did they bring the twelfth then? Mm -hmm. Then they had to say that he had a child, and his child was five years old, and the day was multiplied by by year in order to to play this conspiracy, and suddenly he went in and this hole and nobody knew about him. Why? They wanted, they wanted to make people, to have people thinking that this is the truth and uh, they wanted to invent an Imam number 12 which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow them and they confessed by themselves in their book of Al-Kafi You see, you have many points against the Bible the You can prove the them against them and also with the Shia Exactly! Since <coughs> two years, brothers we challenged the Shia to bring one hadith narrated authentically to the Prophet. Till today, they, they were not able to bring one hadith. Authentic. To the Prophet Muhammad. They do not in the room called Sirdab. You know the Sirdab, which some Sunni people, they, they put, you know, they made their room under the title of Sirdab. You know, as a market for the Shia doctrine. And they put on the banner. Since two years until now, father of hadith, his name is Al-Yami, he offered this challenge. And many people tried, they came and said, well, we have this. He said, okay, bring it. Narrated by, said, he, he said, stop. This one was criticized by your scholars, that he is weak, etc., etc., etc. They can't do anything. Sure. Brothers, wallahi, until now. They were not. Look, if, if their whole religion does even one narration authentic, but to the Prophet ﷺ, what can you do with this kind of re religion? What kind of religion is this? Yes, sir. Sorry, Sheikh. Sure. Al Kafi, you mentioned uh, the 11th Imam. I just missed the source of that. I just got Al Kafi, I didn't get the book. So it was the first book you said, yeah? Hmm? The first book you said Al Kafi. You the batteries, I don't want to. Book number one. The batteries are going to be You know, he was, he was unable to oh, have children. Yes. Okay. I hope I can find it. Sheikh, also, would you take the opportunity to give us advice? Because um, my brother here was mentioning like his discussions with the Shia, and what I've, what I've had, you know, over the years, what I know from you, Alhamdulillah, is some advice regarding how you give them doubt. It's not just good enough to have the evidence. It's also knowing if you've got one Shia, how you talk to him. If you've got Sunnis around you who aren't knowledgeable, how you debate with a Shia, and so on and so forth. Do you get me, Shia? I'm with you. You know, because people start off railing off all the all the information because you have to think about those people who are around and listening. The effect it's going to have on them also. Because Shiites sometimes want to debate, you know, just so that they can just so they can confuse the other people. You know, like Joseph Joseph Smith. He's a very well-known Christian uh, scumbag liar. He wants to give dawah to the ignorant audience, not to the speaker that he's talking about. You know what happened between me and Joseph Smith? Something really strange. He was at the Hyde Park and he said, Muhammad has no name in the Bible, is not mentioned in the Bible, and I'm standing there. I have two incidents with him. Number one is this one. I had a Jewish person that stand, stood beside me, subhanAllah, Allah brought him. <laughs> Allah brought him. And he has this small hat. It's what, what do you call it? It's a cover. It's called a, uh, a cover. Coca? No, a cobble, like a cobble. Oh, a cobble, okay. We call it a skull cap. Okay. I thought cobble. Oh, no. So, I said to the Jewish guy, do you have your Bible in Hebrew? He said, why? I said, I just want to have a look at a certain verse in it, please. He said, yes, I do. He brought it. I said, could you please open the book 
sons of Solomon, of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. He said, yes. He opened it. He said, can you read it to me? He said, yeah. but it doesn't mean that this is Muhammad you're talking about. I said, it's not your business. <laughs> I took it from him. So while he was, Joseph Smith was shouting, I said, look, brothers, I have a Jewish guy beside me who has the Bible in Hebrew. And I asked him about this verse, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. And the name of Muhammad is there. And I had the Hebrew Bible with me. Allahu Akbar. It was really a shocking point <laughs> to Joseph Smith and all the others who surrounded him. The other what thing that happened Jew? between me and Joseph Sorry, Smith what is... what did the Jew say to you when, when he read it? He said, it he said that it, it's not just like the matter, the, how you understand it. He's not talking about Muhammad. He said Muhammadim. He's not talking about Muhammad. I said, never mind, give me the book. <laughs> The second thing that happened between me and uh, Joseph Smith, he said, look, they say that the Quran is good, but the Quran was not revelation within 600 years. I said, I want to make that. You know what you're talking This is a paper and a pen. Write for us, my brothers. He stood silent and did not even say anything. You know how the Quran is good. Then I left and he was caught. May Allah curse him, and Allah expose him in front of everybody. He refused. So, uh, the same man, yeah. Yes. I had this with an Egyptian Christian, cop Christian. She came in and started lying. I said, okay, let's do Mubahala now, come on. And now they run away. So, like, yeah, every yeah, yeah. time. I've never known one Christian to stay in Mubahala. They don't, to them, they don't think they're liars. It's just that they, uh, they don't know what to keep. They, to, they have to say these things. No, but if you offer, no, if you discuss with them, and then you say to them, they're afraid. No, they won't. Yeah, no. If, if you discuss with them, we're not going to finish our lecture. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they're afraid. 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 they and his wives did not have any body. And he died at the year 260. And their relatives entered to the house of his wives and his concubines that he, that they may be finding something, did not find anyone among them to distribute inheritance to his mother and to his brother Jaffa. And we know in Islam, if you have a child, your brother is not going to inherit you. Your brother is not going to inherit you. Why they gave his money, distribute his money between his mother and his brother? Allah Akbar. Because he has no children. Where did this guy come, come, come from? He sent to the house of Al Hassan Al Askari, the Imam number 11, to find out if he has anything in his life, any child. They did not find anyone. Right, okay, this is a question from the sisters, I think, but I want someone to, to read it. Yeah, what is the difference between the Shia view on Al-Mahdi and the Sunni view of Al-Mahdi? What is the difference between the Sunni and the Shia belief in intercession? Let us give the sisters a portion of the questions. Number one, Mahdi. But you do not believe that our Imam is hidden as I do not buy fish while it's in the sea, I do not give bay'ah to a man who is under the ground. Under the ground to me is equal of under the sea. They are both the same. We believe in Al-Mahdi, but we believe that he deserves to be Imam while he will be alive and he will appear among us. Not him when he is underground. Kufi Anan wants to have a meeting with him, but he's not available. <laughs> Okay, so this is fiction. We don't believe in Mahdi that we have to to move away to tell King Fahad or Mubarak move away, go away because we have the Mahdi. He's not available. If he's not available, he's not Imam. But they want us to believe that he is available. He is Imam, and that's not your business to investigate where he is. Can't be. So our Mahdi is not the same. Our Mahdi is not the same of that Mahdi. Our Mahdi who belongs and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will repent on him and he will become righteous 
in a day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to enable him to be the leader. You call that able to be the leader while he's, while he's underground? And you believe that all made the leader, 12 in control. Where is that control? In a small hole underground. To the Muslim, where's your leader? Underground. He's saying he's underground. Ah, no, but my leader, Paul the Sixth, is available. While your Imam is not available. I prefer to remain Christian. I have an Imam who's available. The leader of the Vatican is available, but the leader of the, of the Muslims is unbound in a hole. <laughs> so I hope this is understood. He'll be having this like the father's name of the Prophet, Muhammad bin Abdullah. And he is going to appear. He'll be, he'll be available at the same time when the Prophet Jesus وسلم, will come down, but not as a Prophet. And it is authentically narrated that Al-Mahdi is going to order Jesus to be the leader in the prayer, but Jesus will be saying, no. Let, uh, uh, let this Ummah be the leader, not me anymore. They say, see, that shows that the, the, the Mahdi is better than Jesus. Why? Because he ordered the Jesus to be the, the leader in the prayer, but Jesus refused. <coughs> but, look at the next thing. Because Jesus let one of you be the leader among you. You are the most honorable ummah nowadays. The Muslim. Yes. Not because of the Mahdi precisely. Isn't there a difference of opinion whether that will be the Mahdi at the time no. of Jesus? Salam? No, it's narrated, it's uh, mutawatir. There are some people who spread doubts against him. No, I mean, I mean, no, no, uh, not about the existence and coming al Mahdi. So what? Not whether al Mahdi will come or not, but what I mean is the time where he will be the definition of Isa alayhi salam. No, there's no difference. Of, of okay. No, they all agree that it's going to be the same time. That they will be at the same time, and they all and and both will be praying in al -mana, the mosque called al Manara al Bayda. Al Manara al Bayda in Dimashq. Is it measured the Amu? Yeah. It... No, it's not the, so, the Amu Muslim. Okay, what is the difference between the Sunni and the Shia concerning the belief of intercession? That's another topic and a big topic. And it deserves that we give it a special subject, special time. But anyway, I'm going to sum it up. You know, we're coming back off the door, yeah? Yes, in two minutes I'm going to sum summarize it. Inshallah, because we have three minutes to do, so it means we need to be there okay. for one minute. Okay. Uh, in the matter of intercession, we believe in the, in the intercession. But we do not ask the Prophet to intercede for us. Yes, if the Prophet was alive, no problem. We ask him. For, for example, we ask the brother, please, oh, oh brother, make dua for us. There's nothing wrong with it. But to ask him in the unseen and to believe that he is available for millions of people in different places of the world, that he asks the Prophet when he hear you, as he will be hearing other millions at the same time, makes him God. We do not call the absent one while we believe that, because the only one who hears us in the unseen is Allah. This is what we say also to, to, to the Christians. I was asking a Catholic person, do you ask Mary? He said, yes. I said, why? He said, she's pure. I said, yes. We agree on that. She's pure. He said, yes. I said, what about thousands of people in churches when, they, when they're at the same time, in different places? Can she, can she listen to all at the same time? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. And that is why when Allah said in the Quran to, to Jesus, did you say to the people, take me as God, take me and my mother as God? Now the Christians come and say, look, your book is claiming that we are taking Mary as God. That's not true. We say, yes, it is true. Because the meaning of the word God is not only the creator. No. The word ilah, God, in Arabic, means the one who people are supposed to be running to when they have any need. This is the meaning of ilah in Arabic. So when you ask Mary for your need, apart from Allah, you're taking Mary as God apart from Allah. That's the end of it, and we, as a continuation to the question of uh, one of the sisters, 
about the matter of the Mahdi from the Muslims, from the Sunnis' perspective. Number one, we said that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to support his ummah and his religion by a person at the end of this life, before the end of his life, who is one of the who belongs to the family of the Prophet, he will fill the earth justice as it was filled and his name and the name of his father will be the same of the Prophet's name and the name of his father, Muhammad bin Abdullah. And he will be born at the end of the life, not uh, 1,000 years ago. But this one, this one's name is, is not Muhammad ibn Abdullah, but his name is Muhammad ibn Hassan. And the Shia themselves confess that this has no existence. As I, as I uh, quote to you, uh, Al-Mufid, in his book, he said about the number 11 Imam, he said, no son of him had ever been appeared in his life. And none of the people had not read And A'lam al-Wara A'lam al-Wara Bi A'lam al-Huda al-Tabrasi Page 380 Despite this The Shia insisted That there is an existence for this uh, So-called son Who lived more than Nuh Who lived more than Nuh But, Muhammad, but Nuh when he lived Lived on Now one of the Shia said don't you have a story in Sahih Muslim that the companions were lost because of the wind which caused them to stay in a peninsula, a small peninsula and they saw a beast and they saw after the beast they saw a person who is captured and this beast's name was Al Jassasa and this person was called the Antichrist so this man is still living. We said, yes, this is what you're talking about. That the one is your, the one whom you believe he's the Mahdi, in fact, he is that guy with that beast. You're correct. You're correct. <coughs> so they wanted to prove this. We agree. There is Antichrist captured and he's still alive. Yes, we believe in this. Why well, he's the Antichrist. Yes. The Shia. The Jews, the Christians, when this Antichrist appeared, the Shia would be thinking this is the Mahdi, and the Christians would be thinking that this is Jesus. What is the Antichrist? As a fruit for their false belief. So, you say he is five years old, and you call him Imam, yet Al Khomeini made very clear that the conditions for that he should be. Huh? She's not sure. She not be small. In Al Hukum al Islamiyah, page 45, made this a decision. So, how can you believe that he is a leader? Also, it's mentioned in the book of Al Kafi that Musa ibn Jaffa, he was a newborn. And one of the companions of Jaffa al Sadiq heard him saying something and Jafar the father was speaking to his son who was days ago and Jafar asked him what are you saying? he said he's telling me that you had a child called Humaira Shia Moh they call her Humaira because she used to be having a, a bit of red skin he said yes I had a child newborn child and I called her Al Humaira he said he's telling me a person because this is the name that Allah hates. Where's that? In al So he was couples of days old. And he speaks like this. So, so in fact, the death of the Imam number eleven, it was a tragedy that destroyed the pillars of the Shia's that that was the they have scattered in more than 14 cults because of the death of this 11th immediately after his death the Shia became the grandson of Al-Hussein did you hear about Jafar al-Kathib the Shia themselves 
because him Jafar Kazab. Who is that? He is the he is the the brother of his brother of the Imam number eleven. The Shia, no more Imam. He used to be strict, and he is Kazab. But wait, he belongs to the to the family of the Prophet. Despite they say that the sons of Al Masum, Al Masum being sinless, he never make a mistake. Not even forget. Because he is holy. He's 100% holy. Uh, by telling us about what happened to the son of Noah. When they say that the son of is Masum, because the father is Masum, must be also new. That Now the question is why he is hiding if he's if he's in Saddam under the hole, where is he? Okay. They delivered their weapons to the Americans. I said, shame on this Mahdi. You claim that this army belongs to Al Mahdi and they delivered their weapons to the Americans? How come this is a shame Al Mahdi? They delivered the weapons to the Americans. So where is he? And he turned off the air. May Allah reward you. So how do you believe that the Amin, fear of being killed, he'll be knowing that the knowledge of the future that he'll be remaining alive. And the Imams, they will be one day. Yes, that they know, and they said that they know everything. <coughs> and and he put it on the Tatar Al Kafi Al Kulaini. He said, which <laughs> Allah. Because Allah is the only one. That's why I said that the Shia say, maybe not by their tongue, but they, by their behavior, they say, Sami'na wa asayna. We hear and we disobey. Why? When you the Prophet knows the unseen, they say, yes. Prophet, ya'lamu al-ghayb. Qulu lakum, aqulu lakum, inni malak. Say, of Allah, nor I have the knowledge of the unseen. I have the unseen. So what do you think about to that? So there's another. وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ And who surround you among the Arabians, that means Bedouins. Bedouins. Women of Medina and some of the people of Medina, they lived with hypocrisy. They are hypocrisy. Do not know them. He did not say, "Look, you have problems." Plural and singular, right? But in Arabic, it's different. What does this mean? We know some of the unseen, which became no more unseen to us. It became seen, not unseen, after they were revealed, conveyed them. He said. No one knows about it, neither the questioner and nor the one who was asked. He was afraid that the Abbasi Caliphate will capture him and kill him. But there's no more Abbasi. You have the Iranian Republic now. Who's who's the leader? Khatimi. This Khatimi should be punished. Why should be leader? Why he is ox? Mahdi, the one. So they have an authority. Why Al Mahdi doesn't come to become the leader of that authority? No answer. This is mentioned in the book under the book. But Imam Zim had died. And we are in. That he could see. But as if he had this super power, does this say that they leave? The kill of Iris and him? How do they answer the Prophet Muhammad? What's the answer to all that? <laughs> Usually they do not they try to go to the side. This Mahdi will come back. What we're going to do is, is that to revive Abu Bakr and Umar precisely. Anyone who was very influential in defending Islam and spreading Islam is becoming their enemy. Anyone that becomes influential in narrating the hadith becomes their enemy. Abu Huraira. And one, but two, three for him. 
and he's going to huh? whip. whip her. No. And he's going to hit the neck of 500 people among Quraysh. And Muawiyah and Yazid both are going to be revived. He's going to do that. I think he's going, he's going to be busy with killing the Muslims, not the non-Muslims. <laughs> Tafsir al-Safi, first volume, page 107. And he'll the offspring of the killers of al Hussein by the sin of their fathers. <laughs> Christianity. <coughs> Tafsir mentioned, first volume, two. Sure. Sure. We ask this question, just one second. How we believe that the Shia are so greedy so enthusiastic to get united with the Sunnah while they believe in these things. And they have an annual revival for what? For hatred. By heating themselves, beating themselves. And reminding the common people about what happened in order to revive the hatred that may sleep during the year. Every year. Yes. So, Chef, maybe you don't. Maybe you won't think this is relevant, but regarding the hatred of uh, Yazid ibn Muawiyah, isn't that, wasn't he one of those involved in the conquest of Constantinople? Those who will go to how they will be forgiven or they will go to Jannah? Or this is Hadantik, and Yazid started this virtue. And by the way, Yazid, it was authentically narrated by Ibn Kathir in Al-Bidai wa Nihai. That Yazid, when he received uh, the news about the death of al Hussein, he cried. There is up, warming up in Al-Kufa. You don't know the people of the Kufa. By the way, do you know who's the killer of al Hussein? Kufis. The Shia. Al-Kufa are the killers of al Hussein. Also, could you give clarification for about Yazid for the brothers as well, inshallah, please? That's it. Muhsin, one of the best in the sense. Ayan al-Shia, first volume, 26. Hassan was given by, how do you say they gave him by allegiance? Pledge, pledge of allegiance. Allegiance. Pledge, pledge of allegiance. They pledged allegiance? They pledged allegiance? Allegiance, yeah. Allegiance, okay. I take it from you. Sure, they right. pledged al allegiance? Allegiance, yeah. Okay. <coughs> they pledged allegiance to Al Hassan. Then they cheated him. Yeah. Then they. His stomach. Why? Because he delivered the bay'ah that they gave him, they delivered the it to Aliyah. Do you hate that? Yes. Why? Because he's fighting Aliyah. Wait a minute, but gave him the bay'ah. So what do you say about that? They called him, Ya Mudhil al Mu'mineen. Usually they used to call him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. That means the prince of the believers. Now they say, Oh, humiliator of the believers. Why? Because he delivered the leadership to Muawiyah. We had a, a debate on the TV channel, Al Mustaqillah, and one of the Shia said, We are much better than the Sunni people. Those Sunni people, they give bay'ah to those oppressors. We do not do that. So I took the telephone and I called the channel and I said to them, I spoke in front of millions of people, and I said, Yes, it is true that we give bay'ah to the oppressor people. But our good example in this is Ali, because he gave bay'ah to Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and they are oppressors in your perspective. Could they give any answer? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So, he said, they attacked him in Iraq, and they stabbed him on the side of his stomach, and they have stolen as booties everything that he has with his special people. And also they gave bay'ah to Hussein. They said to him, come, come. We're expecting you, we're waiting for you. And when he came, غَدَرُوا بِهِ Not cheated him, it's another word. Betrayed. betrayed. I've been looking for the word. They betrayed him. And his bay'ah was on their necks. 18,000. Oh, no, he said 20,000. 20,000 cheaters, 
betrayers. They invited him to come. They promised him they'll be supporting him, and they left him. They forsake, 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 or forsake, yeah, forsook, 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 yeah. abandoned him. Abandoned. Where's that? Ayanu Shia, first volume, page twenty-six. Kitab Salim Ibn Qais, page hundred and eighty-eight. Bihar Anwar, volume twenty-seven, page two hundred and twelve. At Darajat al Rafi'ah fi Tabaqat al Shia, for Ali Ibn Masum, page number five. All of those people, and there are even more. They confess that the Shia of Al Hussein are those who betrayed Al Hussein and are those who caused him death. We used to see something when we were kids in London from the Shia sometimes believe themselves, they say, We killed him! We killed him! We killed him! They did not betray the family of the Prophet only. They are still betraying all Muslims until today. There is an internal hand that is shaking hands with the external hands of the enemies of the Muslims. Many people used not to realize this, but now it's becoming clearer, more clear. You know what I mean. I have a picture here. Muhammad Bakr al-Hakim, the one who was hitting himself yesterday, you saw him? He is kissing... Uh, Paul Bremer, lips to lips, just like a husband kisses his wife, lips to lips. You want me to show it to you? Yeah. <laughs> lips to lips. Sheikh, while, ah. you, while you're looking for it, could you speak for Adam regarding Yazid and Constantinople? That, that kissing is that around, around the area, they do that, don't they? Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we say, Akhi? Just regarding Yazid Where? ibn Muawiyah. The Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that... Uh, it's Russia. <laughs> ...that uh, the army... The Prophet, Prophet. There will be an army who will be firstly opening... Uh, what do you call it in English? Well, it's Turkey now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's Turkey. Turkey. Constantine. 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 Uh, Constantine. This army will be forgiven. And the... Head of this army, it was led by Yazid uh, ibn Muawiyah. And by the way, what people remember about Muawiyah now, false things. <coughs> we should not forget that Muawiyah spent his life opening countries after countries for Islam. And millions upon millions are becoming Muslim by Islam. That's why, brother, we should not oppress people. They may be having some wrong things, but they will be nothing compared to the, to the ocean of their good deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided one person by you, it's better to you than the whole rewards of the earth. In this picture, which you see, what's wrong with my computer? It's becoming Shia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this picture, you see, a bo this book is called Thumma Tadayi, then I was guided. In this book, he said that the Prophet وسلم, said, yeah, this is the book. Then I was guided. In this book he said that the, it is narrated in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said, Man kuntu mawlahu fahada ali and huwa mawla. What a big liar. It's not there. Another thing. He said, the Prophet said, Ibhath an dini kahatta yuqal majnoon. Search for your religion until people will say you are crazy. As a matter of fact, Tijani is crazy. He said, narrated by Bukhari. It's neither in Bukhari nor in any book, even unauthentic. We just want it to be unauthentic. But to be in any book, it is not in any book. Neither in the books of the Sunnah nor in the books of Shia. And he <laughs> says, Rawah al-Bukhari. He said to us, Wallahi, on the TV, 
If you bring to me in my book that I said, Man kuntu mawla Ali huwa mawla. It's in my book and I said it's narrated by Muslim, I will return to become Sunni. We brought the book and we showed the, him the book in front of everyone. Did he become Sunni? No. <laughs> what was his response? Nothing. Just run away. We renamed the book anyway, you know that. Then I became a Kafir. <laughs> no, a brother of Muntasir Blushi, if you heard of him, he said, This book deserves to be called Thumma Tabalt. Then I became crazy. Thumma <laughs> Tabalt. <laughs> <laughs> this man, you know, he was acting really crazily, wallahi. And he had a big hat with red hat, internal one, and surrounded by white, uh, you know, in his, he looks like Santa Claus. So Sheikh Abu Muntasir in the TV, is, he was saying to him, shut up, Santa Claus. <laughs> then he had to change his clothes at the next day because he was always calling him Santa Claus, Papa Noel. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, he changed his clothes and he made everything black. Then he said to him, shut up, Hacham. Hacham means rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> so, he couldn't find, he couldn't find any other color in order to get rid of Exactly. Mashallah, Muntasir is Iranian Sunni. Yeah, he's very strong. Mashallah. Really, he's very strong. Was it when he also pointed His out language doesn't help him sometimes because he doesn't speak. He doesn't speak really good Arabic. But Mashallah, he was he was very good. In it. He also pointed out, I think, that he always eating with his left hand on that same Yeah, that happened. He said, "You claim to be a good Muslim. Look, you're drinking with your right left hand." Okay, you ask me. No, I asked, you answered regarding the... Oh, the no, I was looking for the picture. The picture of Bremner. I was looking for the picture. I'm, I'm going to make a search just a minute. Uh, about uh, kissing lips to lips. What's this... What, you, what, what's, what do they say regarding this book that outside of? What do they say? Uh, so Can you give an explanation about it? <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's laughs> then I was trying to the picture. Brothers... Uh, the matter of Hezbollah in Lebanon is a matter of deception, a great deception. And now they are preparing someone to play the same role. What happened in Lebanon? In Lebanon there used to be an army, it's called the Southern Lebanese Army, led by Christians. But the army of, the, of those Christian leaders were Shia. The army of the, 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 the individual, the soldiers of, of, of this army are Shia. Just one second, please. Okay. Now, those Christian army that Colin Powell, Paul Bremer, Muhammad Bakr Sadr. That reminds you about the gays. Is there a, is there a source of this picture? Yeah. 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 Oh, the, the picture is a source by itself, look. Like. Yeah, I know, but which was it in a was it in a magazine, newspaper, or film? It's in it's a newspaper, but uh, I don't I can't have access to it now. Okay. Kissing, mouth to mouth. What is this? Disgusting. <laughs> this guy is standing. And who is Colin this? Colin Powell who has a problem. The... You know, the other one who is kissed, who, the other one. He's a uh, Muhammad Bakr al-Sadr, the one who oh, was Sadr. hitting himself, who you saw yesterday. Did, no, he didn't come yesterday. Here yesterday. Oh, no. He wasn't here yesterday. Uh, he was hitting. You should have seen him, man. I will give it to you, Michelle. Ask the nominated before. Okay. okay. No. No. Oh, it's not Muqtada al-Sadr, no. <laughs> no, no, not Muqtada al-Sadr, no, no. <laughs> Let's uh, continue to the story. 
about Hezbollah because many people praise Hezbollah and they say, MashaAllah, they are good warriors, they are etc., etc. Why they are liars? Um, so the Israelites found the need of getting rid of this army because this army was tackled, attacked. And the Shia wanted to attack them because they want themselves to influence the whole area. Not to be influenced by, by those Christians. Because the soldiers are Shia. Yet the leaders are Christians. So the Israelites decided, after they had an agreement with Hezbollah. And among the conditions of the agreement is that they should not be making any operations, militant operations against the Israelites. They signed that. And one of those who scandaled this case is Subh Tufayli, who used to be supervisor for Hezbollah under Hassan Nasrallah. He said they signed it, and during an interview on Al Arabiya TV, he said, "Get back to the to the agreement between Hezbollah and Israel." You will find one of the conditions that no operations should be allowed on the borders. And Hezbollah signed it and said yes. He said, if you want another proof, let anyone go to the borders between Lebanon and Israel. And let him try to make any operation and see what's going to happen to him. And who's going to capture him and who's going to persecute him or even to kill him. Go and see. He's Shia, he's not Sunni. He's a big scholar, Shia scholar. But he abandoned this husband. He claimed, he, he accused them that they are liars and they are cheaters and betrayers. Traitors. Traitors. So they said, the Israelites said, this is the best thing. We let the Shia be the protectors of our borders. <laughs> and they claimed that, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we are attacking Israel. The Israelites, they retreated 10 kilometers from Lebanon because of the UN pressures against them. They went 10, meet, uh, 10 kilometers behind and Hezbollah said, Allahu Akbar, we defeated them. You see, we defeated them. And the emotional people, stupid people, oh, they stupid, but they are full of emotions. And as I told you, when, the, when a person is full of, of emotions, there is no space, no more space for mind. There is no more space for the mind to work. Halash. Because the emotions have replaced the space of the mind. So, I don't, I'm not wondering if Mubarak's borders with Israel have peace. I, I'm not wondering I don't wonder if I see, for example, the borders between Jordan Jordanians and the Israelites have peace. But I wonder to see this Lebanese border is protected by Hezbollah. At the same time, there is peace. There should not be peace when they say, Allahu Akbar, we're going to attack, we're going to Jerusalem. You do not go to Jerusalem. You're maintaining the borders. But in a very deceptive a uh, deceiving way, deceptive way, by saying we are going to attack them, we are the enemies of the Israelites, yet we see nothing. They have peace between one another. And now, they are doing the same thing, trying to produce another person, just like Hassan Nasrallah, and to have another Hezbollah in Iraq, which will be maintaining peace, while deceiving people at the same time. This is, in fact, what's, what's happening there. Let's get back to our subject. We did not enter to our subject until now. Well, why? So we begin now. Oh, I have the question. Okay, the sisters now. I'm confused. Do the, Sh do the Shia not believe that their Mahdi will come out? You have the right to be confused, sister. That's why they always say Aj. When they talk about the Mahdi, they say Aj. Aj. When they write it on papers, you'll find two letters after the name of the Mahdi. 
Ain Jin Aj, which is the what do you call it, abstraction of Ajal Allahu Faraja. May Allah hasten his coming out. Abbreviation. Abbreviation. Thank you. They are themselves confused. Not you only. But you should not be confused unless you believe you have the same of their beliefs. When you have the same beliefs of, of their beliefs, you are allowed to be confused. But we, not, if we know that every false cult must contradict itself. Look, they are resembling Christianity. Don't Christians believe that Jesus has the superpower over everything? Yet at the same time they cry. They say that his enemies were spitting on him, beating him up. He was powerless. He could not resist. He was weak. Some people were taking his clothes out. Some people are. And they were going around him. And they were mocking him. And they said, he saved others, but he could not save himself. Remember that? The same thing is happening about the family of the Prophet. Muawiyah killed him. He was persecuted. The other Imam was persecuted. The other Imam, they were all persecuted. They could not do anything. Don't you say that they have super, super power? That they are supervisors over the whole world? And all, even the atoms, they said, as Khomeini said. The whole world, with its atoms, is complying to the super power of the leaders. Was that, was that, was that from Al-Hukum al-Islamiyah? Al-Hukum al-Islamiyah, page 52. <coughs> Same thing. There was a, a film, a movie, about the pains, the agonies of Jesus. It was played in the cinema. We were young, 10 years, 10 years old, 12 years old. And in the cinema, there were many old women. And they started to cry when they saw Jesus was brought and they're now putting him on the cross. You know, this is a movie playing. So the women were crying and says, Take your hand away from him, may Allah break your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing is happening with <laughs> They're crying, crying. What? They were very weak, they were persecuted. What is their power? He must be quite old as well when he comes out, considering a, a, a year in a day, sort of thing. Sorry? Uh, Marjorie, when he comes out, he must be quite old, ancient, what, like, because a year... It's equivalent to a day in normal. He so. should be looking any yani, horrible. Well, I, I don't know what he looks like, but like, he must be very, very young. He's say like he's like Nua, you know, because Nua lived 900 years. You know? Yeah, anyway, now we start with the Quran, for example, in the chapter 55, verse 10. A person came to Malik ibn Anas, and he said to him, I hate Abu Bakr. I hate Anas. I hate the companions of the Prophet. Do not forget that it's related a uh, narration narrated in uh, Al-Kafi in Al-Kafi that the whole companions became apostate. Apostate. Apostates. Apostate. After the death of the Prophet, except for three. And some narrations, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, they give us the chance of four more companions to be exempted from apostasy. So they become, by the grace of Allah, seven. What? Seven? So the person came to Malik ibn Anas and said, I hate those companions. He said, he started to recite to him, because those, those scholars, they were great in bringing the suitable verse and the suitable question and the suitable situation. He quoted to him Lil Fuqara in Muhajirin. I can bring it to you. For the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their properties, seeking bounty from Allah and his approval, and supporting Allah and his messenger. Those are the truthful. So Malik said to that person, I 
are you of those people? He said, no. He continued. And also for those who were settled in the home, that means Medina, the people of Medina, and adopted faith before them. They love those who immigrated to them and find not any want in their hearts and breasts of what they were given. Give them presents over themselves. They prefer them over themselves, but the, but the Shia say no, they prefer themselves. They prefer others over themselves, Allah is saying. But they say no, they prefer themselves, that's why they did some verses from the Quran that talk about it. Change it.